John's so young and impulsive. Oh, well, now, Mother, wait a minute. This is different. Are you visiting relatives here in New York, my dear? Uh, well, yes and no. We, not exactly. I came over with Johnny. From Boston, together, last night. Well, yes, Mother, we thought as long as we were engaged. Engaged? Oh, I know how upset you must be, Mrs. Mason. You know so little about me, and it all happened so suddenly. I should think it was sudden. What did your family have to say about it? I have no family. Oh. Didn't John say something about your taking a course in journalism? Yes, but I gave it up after I met Johnny. Yeah, I'm sort of a postgraduate course. <laughs> if you have a talent for writing, take my advice and develop it while you're young. One needs all one's time and energy for a career. Don't you think marriage is a career in itself? Oh, indeed, emphatically. That's why one mustn't rush into it pell-mell. Marriage is a business, a very serious business, a partnership in the strictest sense of the word. One must prepare for it. There are so many things to learn. Well, uh, Jane will learn all those after we're married. I hope and pray that that day will not come for many years. Well, Mother, what, what do you mean? You mean we shouldn't? Emphatically not. There's no reason for Jane to develop into a little household drudge. Oh, I hope you understand I have nothing against Jane. In fact, I like her. I like her very much. Well, I'm glad you do, Mother, because you remember a little while ago you asked Jane whether she'd come to New York to visit relatives? Well, as a matter of fact, she has come to New York to visit relatives. She's visiting some right now. You see, we're married. <laughs> Oh. Well, now, Mother, everybody gets married sooner or later. Johnny, get the smelling salts. What do they look like? Mother, where are the smelling salts? Uh, what's done is done. You have children of your own, I suppose, and you love them and devote your life to them. And then they'll grow up and leave you, and you'll say to yourself, it's all right, that's the way it is. You've served your purpose. Mother, don't excite yourself anymore. Oh, I'm all right now. <laughs> I wish you every possible happiness and joy. I think perhaps I'd better go to bed. I'm all right. I'll find a place to live, of course. Some place to live? Well, of course not, Mother. You'll stay with us. <laughs> We're... Well, we're going to find a new apartment. We've talked this all over, and Jane Lynn says, won't you, darling? We couldn't think of anything else. Well, we'll see. See, I told you it'd be all right. Oh, Johnny, maybe we shouldn't have gotten married. No, maybe we shouldn't have gotten married at all. All visitors are short, please. All visitors are short, please. Don't let him eat too many strawberries. I won't. He gets rashes. And don't forget to make him wear his raincoat in London. I won't. He had pneumonia once. Oh, Mother, that was 12 years ago. I feel fine now. And take good care of yourself, too. Goodbye, Mrs. Mason. Take good care of me. <laughs> Goodbye, Mother. Oh, now, Mother, oh, it's only two weeks, you know. I do. Goodbye. Oh. What's this? The heating pad. You forgot to pack it. Here it is. Ah, uh, what do you think of it? Well, it's cozy. Uh, it's the only one I had left. I think we can do better after both sales. Oh, what for? I, I love it. It's so intimate. What's this? No, that's nothing. No. Is it something somebody gave you? No. Okay. I know it's something no, for me. No, no, it's just it is. Let me no, see it. What do you mean? I forgot to pack. What do you mean so mysterious about? No, Let me no, see no, it. No, no, no. 
Yes. Oh, I bet it's a going away present. You can't fool me, Johnny. You shouldn't have done this. Oh, Johnny, you fool. You wish I couldn't leave it in the office. in school, I was taught that two things can't occupy the same place at the same time. What? Oh. Well, we'll get the store to get us a, a bigger bed. No, well, you couldn't get a bigger bed in here, though. Oh, I think it's big enough. Oh, yeah, where are you trying to turn around? No, I didn't. Let's see. That's what you got. Boy, that ocean's room here. Johnny, this is the first time in my life I've ever been away from America. Me too. Oh, isn't it just beautiful? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I... Jane. What, Johnny? You remember the cinder I took out of your eye up in Boston? Oh, never forget. Well, you know, I threw that away. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have done that. I should have kept that cinder and put it in a locket or something, you know? I if it hadn't been for that cinder, maybe we'd never have met. Oh, don't say that, Johnny. We had to meet. Uh -huh. Yeah, I might be sure I Still have had it for that cinder. Oh, Johnny, isn't it just beautiful? Oh, voyage, darling. Oh, voyage. Where is Sadio's Bible, for? First, go to your left, sir. Come in. Well, hello, Carter. Nice of you to come down. Judge Doolittle sent me. He did. Oh, Carter, this is Miss, uh, Mrs., uh, it's my wife. I found in Mr. Carter from the office. How do you do? Happy to know you. It's a good thing I got her in time. You've got just about ten minutes. Ten minutes for what? To get off the boat. To get off? Uh, what are you talking about? Higgins against Higgins. What about Higgins against Higgins? Higgins against Higgins goes on the calendar for next week. Oh, no, no. Well, that's where you're mistaken. I got a continuance for a whole month. You think you did? Well, I did. Why didn't you ask Hornblow about it? He gave me his word of honor. Well, you know Hornblow. But, Johnny, they can't do this to you. No, they can't do this what to me. What does Judge Doolittle think he is, a puppet? What does he think I am, a puppet or something? Some kind of a pawn he can push around any way he, he likes? push her all over the place. Is that what you want me to tell Doolittle? Yes. Oh, Carter, wait a minute. Are you sure that Higgins case is going on next week? Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Monday morning? Look, will you excuse us just a minute? Jane. I'm, I'm glad you said that, John. Yeah, sure. Jane, look, this Higgins versus Higgins is a pretty important case. I don't care if it's the most important case in the world. It isn't as important as our honeymoon, no, is it? No, no, of course not, darling. But just, just what, what's the matter? It's got lipstick on your mouth. Oh, well, you know, a lawyer is sort of like a doctor or a soldier. You've got to disregard your own convenience. Convenience? You don't call this a convenience. Oh, no, no, darling. Well, listen, darling. Believe me, I'd tell Doolittle to jump in the lake, and I'd be even at the risk of losing my job. But if I win the case, I get a chance to go in with the firm. And a, and a firm like this... But it's my honeymoon, and Doolittle knows it's my honeymoon. You... There are just some things a man just can't do. There's some things a man just can't do. That Carter thought it was funny. He laughed. Oh, I hate that, that liver pill. Did you ever try pulling anything like this again? I hate that judge do nothing. I wish someone would step on that ear thing of his. Well, we still have the tickets here. I hope Higgins beats Higgins.
The alligator pears, Ernest. Huh. Johnny! It's your mother-in-law. Oh, hello, dear. Uh, would you mind fixing the place card for me? Uh, I'm so late. They're right in there on the desk. Certainly, yes, dear. The girl took so long to fix my hair, I, I didn't get out of the place till half past six. Still popping wet. You should have made an earlier appointment. Yes, I should. I thought I'd put Judge Doolittle on my right, of course. Naturally. And Mr. Carter, I suppose I'll have to have him on my left. You seem to think I've never done this before. No, no, dear, it's just that I never have. You have the wine glasses on the wrong side, Annie. The left side was the right side where I worked before. The right side with the water glasses, Annie. How do you think the table looks? It is a little crowded. Oh, that girl will drive me crazy. You know, I used to think that John and Eunice do little. Yes? There was nothing in it. But a lovely girl. Would you be a dear and see if Annie has the appetizers fixed? Why, of course, my dear. I think you have too many on the plate, Annie. And shouldn't they be garnished? Uh, where's the silver tray, the one I gave them? I don't know how many hands they expect you to have around this place. There's just so much a body can do. I'm only human. I'll fix the canopies for you, Annie, as you seem to have so much to do. A little bit too much vinegar in the salad dressing, I'm afraid, Annie. I'm only human. Oh, your potatoes aren't going to burn, are they? I'm afraid to put them on too early. I'm leaving. You're what? Right now. You can stand just so much, and I'm only human. But you can't do that. What's the matter? I can't please everybody. Oh. But, but Annie, my guests will be here any minute. Well, I'll see you through dinner, but I'm leaving at 9 o'clock sharp in order to catch the 9.30 ferry boat to Staten Island. And nobody's going to stop me. I'm only human. Watch the potatoes, Annie. Dear, Annie has so much to do with the extra guests and everything. Don't you think we'd better humor her tonight and sort of leave her alone? But you asked me to see about the canopies. Well, I know, but it's a great deal for one person to do, and too many of us telling her what to do only upsets her. Well, I was only trying to help. Oh, there's Johnny. Uh, I bet you forgot the wine. Oh, oh Grandpa's favorite tipple. Called up Doolittle's Club and found out. Pretty nice, huh? Uh, it's burgundy and it sparkles. Here, have Annie chill it, Mother. Of course, they'll be here any minute. Hey, come on, you better hurry up and get dressed. How's everything going? Everything's lovely. An ultimatum from Annie, and this one's final. She's through tonight. Tonight? It's all right, though. She'll see us through dinner. Oh. I don't see why you have so much trouble with the servants. Out the office, we get all the help we want. I'd like to change places with you just for one day. Jane, for Pete's sake, what did you do with the witch hazel? I didn't have it. Look on the third shelf back of the eye wash. You're always putting things behind things. That was a brilliant idea of yours asking Eunice Doolittle at the last minute. Well, she and the judge are sort of like corned beef and cabbage. They're always together. And that impossible twerk, Carter. I suppose you had to ask him, too. Well, Eunice had some sort of a date with Carter, so what could I do? Gosh, I not only do all that guy's work for him, I feed him as well. Well, it's all going to be different when my name goes up there in that door. Johnny, you really think so? Well, it's practically up there now. What's for dinner tonight? Roast beef. Roast beef? Doolittle's delight. You know, I tried to have Annie make Yorkshire pudding, but she never heard of it. It's all right. Between roast beef and Higgins against Higgins, how can we lose? <laughs> so, it's going to be all right. My name up there in the door. Doolittle. Nestor Smith. Doolittle. Hutch. And Mason. Oh, Johnny. Well, didn't I win my motion for a new trial in Higgins against Higgins? I had a memo from Doolittle today. You did? What did he say? He said he couldn't have handled better himself. When he eats from your table tonight, he'll eat out of my hand. And will I tell Carter? And will we hop to Normandy? And will we go places? And will we do things? <laughs> Darling, I don't like that tie. Where the blue oh, one? Holy mackerel. Johnny, does your name have to be last? Well, for the time being, anyway. Gosh, you know what it means to a man to get into a firm like that? You know what it means to a...